G'day guys, and today I'm going to review the game which is between North Melbourne, Geelong. Roll coaster is the only way to describe this game. Uh, the Cats got home in the end by four goals, and there were times throughout the game where Geelong put it to bed, or it looked like it was just about done and dusted. One more goal makes it near on impossible. But, as you can see by this little worm graph here, they just they kept coming, they kept coming, and um, but we eventually got over the line. So, um, first term, North had a lot of the play, but they couldn't really make us pay with, um, yeah, just uh, some disconnection between their midfield and forward, and some really good pressure from our defence as well. Um, we were able to go forward not many times, and we kicked three straight, so it's amazing the difference there. Um, that quarter alone is quite significant, because if North got off to a better start, then we probably wouldn't see uh, the result we're seeing right at the minute. Second term, we, we switched it on a bit and did really well. Um, yeah, got a little bit more in our terms. Still, North had a fair chunk of the play, but we were getting a little bit more um, reward for effort there. And the third term kicked the six goals, which is where we played probably our best footy. And uh, yeah, really put on the afterburners. And uh, yeah, we were fine for a fair chunk of it. Then North all of a sudden kicked a number, you know, they kicked their five goals, we kicked our six goals. So. Most exciting term, no doubt about that. And uh, then Gaz, the little master, kicked uh, a couple in the final term to seal the deal. Um, as North were, again, they were coming and uh, they were they were very tough. And yeah, look, all credit to North. Uh, they're a good side. And I, I, um, honestly, I, I thought this was a genuine challenge for us. And I did predict probably last week a four to six goal wins, probably what I expect. And it's. It's funny because I'm, I'm kind of frustrated, but I'm happy with the win. Um, just the way that we allowed them to, I guess, come back into the game was more so annoying. Um, but yeah, to finish up four goals on top, I mean, a win anywhere, anytime um, is valuable. Four points is four points, so we'll take that. Uh, as far as, yeah, the, the numbers, the mechanics, we had more of the footy just. Uh, had 10 more clearances, but it's interesting. I felt like North really dominated out of the middle. But I don't think, if you look at the advanced stats, I don't think it's uh, a major discrepancy either. But I did feel like North had a lot of chances and a lot of looks because of the way they were getting it out of the centre. And Ben Brown was loving some of the work. I think he kicked three in a row or three pretty quickly. And that was <clears throat> providing some nightmares down back for the Cats. 47 inside 50s each, uh, 16 goal return is very solid for that. Output uh, got more of the contested footy, which is so valuable, and not as many tackles in this game. It was a pretty free-flowing game, uh, which allowed sort of yeah, less tackling and a little bit more gameplay. And, and North, to their credit, they moved the ball incredibly quick, and there were times where we were really solid, but there was also times where the defence didn't have enough time to, I guess, uh, get into position to defend probably because North from the stoppage were they it felt like they were more dangerous out of the stoppage than we were. Um, that's what I at least saw. Um, I saw a little, most of the game, um, sort of busy as well, with Mother's Day stuff at the same time. So I, I did what I could to, um, yeah, take a good good view of that. But backs are really solid. Uh, probably let down a little bit in that third turn um, to let him back into the game multiple times. But I think uh, the response late is probably what we're after. And... Yeah, it's all good being challenged, but how do you respond to when you're challenged and when the chips are down and the pressure's really on? That's what you want to focus on. So I felt like it was left to probably a few stars to get get us across the line, but sell it out, obviously. And Gary Rowan concussed. He was out for the game. Atkins had his troubles. Stewart had his troubles as well. So there was a lot going on for the Medicos. They had a busy day at the office. Um, yeah, which I'll discuss soon, but... Yeah, look, we, ball movement was pretty solid. Didn't make um, too many mistakes. We certainly cashed in on North Melbourne's mistakes uh, when that, when they made them. And, yeah, I felt North uh, certainly lost no supporters today. They were, they were really solid. And, yeah, that's sort of those two goals. Um, yeah, it's a pretty close game. And, really, they had the better of us in the third term. Probably for the first half, uh, they had the better of us, but we were just more efficient. Well, we were efficient when we had the ball and had our chances. So... Tough game indeed. It was tough to watch. Frustrating to watch at times because like we're you know over thirty points up, <laughs> we shouldn't lose from here, and then they're getting it back to a couple of goals, and you get a bit nervous. But I'm glad the boys didn't get too nervous when that happened. So we'll move into the player votes, and Tim Kelly has to get the three votes outstanding again. Thirty six touches, 
three marks, seven tackles, two goals at crucial stages. He's all class, this bloke. One of the probably one of the best players in the comp right about now. They'll, they'll say on the TV if you were taking schoolyard pick, he'd be right up there. I mean, he was talked about top five player, best player in the competition. But I tell you what, he's he's just moving up the ranks week by week. He's exceptional, sensational player. Two votes have to go to the little master, Gaz. He got the 16 touches, six marks, and kicked the four goals. Again, they, they were critical. They were valuable. Um, yeah, they just paid him no attention. They were pretty tough goals, all of them. And he just made them pay full price. The way he kicks the ball, the way he uses the ball, like no other. Um, yeah, so I felt he was... Simply brilliant, and I'll have to give the one vote, and it's kind of tough because I could probably give it to four blokes. I thought Stuart was really good, and he never gets a vote. Myers was solid, Clark was good. And I really want to give it to Cunswood. I'll, I'll go Mitch Duncan, just off pure weight of numbers and the way he went about it. 29 touches, 12 marks. He always gets 10, 10 marks plus, um, seemingly. Um, eight tackles there as well, and got on the scoreboard with a behind. I reckon he could have ran in to kick a goal, but... His ball use is really good, really prolific. Uh, once again, just getting his hands to the ball and um, providing a great option throughout the midfield. But I could throw a blanket over a few there, so I probably should do five voters these days. Maybe next year I might make a change. Um, just be like the AFL, just wait a whole year and then change it later on. Uh, looking at the players, Constable again, really solid. 27 touches, 10 marks. Um, that's that's awesome. Clark, two goals from um, basically 60, 65 out. He'll be very pleased with those. Uh, seven marks, so he's a lot better a lot better today and should keep his spot, one would think. They, they do love him down there. Uh, Myers continues to impress. One goal, three. A little bit um, off today, but makes generally makes the most of his chances. He's really good with the ball. He, he takes the tough kick and he backs his leg in. Eight marks is also a good effort. 20 touches and 10 marks to Harry. Uh, superb in the air. Always does his job. 23 to Stewart. Eight marks. Those are quite um, stark numbers, and it felt like when we when he went off, he it really uh, we really struggled down back. So North got on a bit of a roll, and um, they made the most of Stuart being off. Path got the twenty three five marks in there and four tackles. He was solid. Um, again, his decision making at times leaves me um, speechless, but he'll get there with time, no doubt. Tom Hawkins the twelve touches, five marks, four goals. Really, really good return there for for Tom. Um, just yeah, just the ability to finish there fourth straight was just what we needed on a day like today. Under the roof, you can't go wrong with Tom. Dalhouse got the 18 touches, three marks, six tackles, and a goal. He's just just uh, ticking the boxes, doing his job very nicely. Stanley got a bit of the ball. Goldie, I reckon, had the better of him. Well, I'm finding his statistics. Probably gone straight past him. Yeah, so I felt like Goldie had eight touches early on, so he didn't get a lot of it after a quarter time, whenever the time stamp was. Uh, Guthrie got a bit of the ball, he was solid. O'Connor, outside of that holding the ball, was really good. Tui got um, got some of the pill. And some really good dash from Tui at times. Uh, Blitz obviously was, like before Benny Brown got on the off the chain, he was just an absolute blanker, but he uh, ended up with five goals out of nowhere, really. Henry got a few grabs in there. Cole Jasney, a little bit quiet, but sure did his job. Rowan, he's, he went off the ground, but looking him on the TV and live, the way he chases is really, really good. He he just absolutely sprints for the blokes, and they don't see him coming along and sort of rattles you a bit when that happens. Um, Radical Eard, is that the one mark for the game, or is that seven? Yeah, just one mark, and I remember seeing that one. Seven hitouts. Um, yeah, look... He's a real pro deck player. He's gonna be. He's gonna be a really good player, but uh, just he gets to a lot of contests, but doesn't really bring him down many. Atkins uh, struggled a bit, hamstring injury, and he was sort of on and off. And realistically, probably wasn't really in great nick to play. But um, as you see, so were there. I think he was in. He was out. Then he was in. Then he was out again. And then they brought in Constable for him. So I suppose injuries. Rowan might get the the week off, uh, all depending on when we're playing. Uh, concussions they normally take pretty seriously. Atkins, you'd expect with a hamstring, they'll take the conservative approach and have him out. Um, Stewart came back on, so he'll probably play next week. Uh, Dangerfield was really good. And I will do wonder when they will rest Ablett. It'll be very interesting because he's not far off one, but they, whenever they're just about to, there's another star that sort of gets um, a little bit uh, ruffled. So... 
that's uh that's it guys um for as far as the game goes but we've got the dogs next week uh gmhba stadium they've been in some really good touch a couple of really good wins in a row uh geelong were also in good touch too winning seven out of eight so uh, it's gonna be a tough game uh the dogs play pretty brutal style of footy they, they love their contested footy and trying to get back to their 2016 form geelong just ticking along very nicely seven and one uh, a game clear on top of later and percentage as well so could not be going much better at the moment, but it's a long season. It's a marathon. Uh, again, probably similar margin here. I'd say anywhere from the three to five goal mark. It'll be pretty close. It'll be very tough. And the, dog, the dogs do traditionally struggle to beat us in general, um, especially at home. I couldn't tell you the last time they beat us down here. So, yes, uh, it's a tough ground to win at. But, um, yes, yes. Geelong hopefully get the job done once again, take a state one and... Uh, yeah, just keep trying to tick those wins over. So that's it today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Chuck in uh, any thoughts about the game below. And don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe as well. It'll be amazing. And cheers again, guys. I'll see you all soon.